Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to News Dose. So something that we talked about earlier this year was that Jim Ryan publicly talked about an Xbox Game Pass competitor. For this video, we are gonna call it PlayStation Game Pass and well, some details have now surfaced online about this PlayStation Game Pass and you're definitely gonna to wanna to stick around to hear all the details on that because it does seem like some interesting things are happening with PlayStation Game Pass. Now, something else that we have talked about a lot over the last year is how incredibly difficult it is to buy a PlayStation 5, an Xbox Series X, or a Nintendo Switch OLED. Not only are these consoles in high demand, but there's also some shady things happening. And well, it now sounds like the government might be ready to step in. So we will talk about that one as well. To get things started off today though, we are going to be talking about an absolutely ridiculous topic in my opinion, and it's about Take Two and it takes two okay so yes these are very similar names take two the publisher of games like red dead redemption 2 grand theft auto 5 different sports games and so on and so forth well apparently they're not too happy with the game it takes two which in my opinion is one of the best games that's released in 2021 really i just think it's one of the best 3d platformers period and by far one of the most creative games that i have ever played but apparently, Take-Two is not happy with the name. Again, the names are similar here, but uh, let's just go and check this out. Nibble over on Twitter did post this. Take-Two has sent a trademark claim to Hazelight because of It Takes Two, forcing Hazelight to abandon any ownership of the game's name. No details yet whether the game will be renamed or how this impacts its sales marketing. Now, from my understanding, it doesn't sound like that they are going to have the game's name changed, but rather they just don't want them to be able to protect the name. Hazelight themselves have not really come out and said whether they're going to change the name of It Takes Two or not, but I just find this whole entire situation ridiculous and really avoidable for that matter. The reason I say that is because It Takes Two, I'm pretty sure was announced at the Game Awards in 2020, and then it released in like February or March of 2021. And if Take Two really had a problem with this, they could have said something for this game even released and maybe they could have fixed the problem back then. But instead, they waited for almost an entire year. People know this game as it takes two. This game does have a physical release, so there's a lot of product in stores. And then also, with it being one of the best games that's released in 2021, it has been nominated for multiple awards. People are going to be talking about this game. So I just find this whole situation absolutely absurd to be completely honest with you i think take two quite frankly is just being petty by this point and really that's about all i have to say about this subject take two be better than that and it takes two keep rocking and absolutely go check it out because it really is one of the best games that has released in recent years now, moving on from all of that, though, we do actually have some good news as well, thankfully, because Nintendo has now officially revealed when Paper Mario will be coming over to Nintendo Switch Online Plus Expansion Pack. And, well, it's actually coming very soon, as in next week on December 10th. Yes, starting December 10th, if you are subscribed to Nintendo Switch Online Plus Expansion Pack, which I know that there's still some controversy surrounding the pricing, but if you are subscribed, you're going to be able to play one of the most beloved turn-based RPGs ever made. Truthfully, though, I do think that this is a fantastic game that has really stood the test of time, both in terms of its art style as well as with its gameplay. All these years later, it still looks really good, and because this is a turn-based RPG, which in my opinion is one of the most timeless genres in general, it's still a lot of fun to play through. And that's kind of the thing about this particular title, because fans have been asking Nintendo over and over again to make another Paper Mario game with that classic formula. And for whatever reason, and this is all just baffling to me, but Nintendo kind of refuses to go back to that classic formula with Paper Mario. They keep experimenting. They did that with Super Paper Mario. They did that with Origami King. There was Sticker Star or Splash or whatever it was called. And all of these games, I think they sold relatively okay, but they just weren't nearly as well received. And I think that that kind of cuts their legs short. I think that they could probably sell better in the long term if maybe fans actually were glowing about these games. But yeah, Nintendo, for whatever reason, just keeps ignoring that. I mean, even earlier this year, we kind of saw that with new Pokemon Snap. They finally made a sequel to a game that fans have been asking for for decades. And well, it actually did pretty well. Imagine that. It's just a shocker, I guess. But the good news here is that you will now 
be able to play the original Paper Mario on the Nintendo Switch. This is good for fans of the classic that just want to go back and check it out once again, but also because this game has aged so incredibly well, this is going to be a great game to play for newcomers as well. And then you can kind of see why fans have been raving about these games for so many years now. Hey, if enough people like it, maybe Nintendo will finally, finally start to listen. At the very least, maybe we could get a remaster of Paper Mario A Thousand Year Door. Moving on, we do need to talk about PlayStation and that Xbox Game Pass competitor, which I will be calling PlayStation Game Pass for this video. So it's not really a major surprise to hear that PlayStation is working on an Xbox Game Pass competitor. This is something that we have heard them publicly say in the past that they were working on a competitor, even though at one point in time, Jim Ryan did say that Xbox Game Pass was unsustainable. Yeah, there's some mixed messaging going on right now, which isn't really anything new for Jim Ryan per se, but I think that this is good overall news. As you all probably know, I am a big fan of Xbox Game Pass. I think that it does a lot of really good things for the game industry. I think it gives recognition to some smaller games that might otherwise be ignored. It saves gamers a lot of money because a lot of these games come into the service day one. And it also introduces fans to new genres and it just does a lot of really good things. So I think PlayStation Game Pass is an extraordinary idea, but the question is, what is PlayStation Game Pass. And okay, some new details did come out today because Bloomberg did post a big report about PlayStation Game Pass. Apparently, it's codenamed Spartacus. It will combine PlayStation Now with PlayStation Plus and it will offer three tiers of subscriptions. The first tier would include existing PlayStation Plus benefits. The second would offer a large catalog of PlayStation 4 and eventually PlayStation 5 games. And then the third tier would add extended demos, game streaming, and a library of classic PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, PlayStation 3, and PSP games. Oddly enough, the PlayStation Vita once again is being ignored, which really isn't a big surprise by Sony by this point, but that's still a lot of content there overall. It actually does sound pretty interesting on paper, though I still do have some questions. Okay, so if you've been following this channel for a while, you probably know that I have been a little critical when it comes to PlayStation Now. I think PlayStation Now has drastically improved in the last couple years. It seems like it has been getting a lot of high quality games, but my belief on why this service continues to fail time and time again is because it seems like Sony won't fully commit to this service. And what I mean by that is on one side you have Xbox Game Pass and what I think the biggest selling point of this particular service is the day one releases. Not only do they release several third party games into the service day one, but every single first party game, including Halo Infinite, releases directly into Xbox Game Pass. So you can actually buy into Xbox Game Pass and know for an absolute fact that in the long run, you will save money as long as you play their first party games. With PlayStation Now though, it doesn't exactly work that way. Not only do they not release their first party games into the service day one, but even when they do release some of their bigger games, it's only in PlayStation Now for like, three or four months. That to me is a major factor on why more people don't buy into PlayStation Now. The other thing that PlayStation Now has had a problem with is cloud-based games. Now, game streaming has improved in recent years, and we do know that PlayStation has partnered up with Microsoft Azure to support their cloud-based projects. So this isn't necessarily a bad thing on its own, but a lot of hardcore gamers are definitely going to prefer to play their games locally. So with PlayStation Now being absorbed into PlayStation Plus, I mean, Again, that sounds great on paper, but then the question becomes, are you going to be able to play these games locally or are they going to be played through the cloud like we see with PlayStation Now? Now, I think with PlayStation 1 and 2, you can probably find a way to emulate these games, though PlayStation 3, that one's going to be a little bit more difficult because of the cell processor. So my first initial guess is that there's a very good chance that at least with the PlayStation 3, these will more than likely be cloud-based. So while on paper, I think it sounds great to combine PlayStation Plus with PlayStation Now, I've kind of always said the same thing over and over again, and that is, is that Sony needs to improve the policies of a service like PlayStation Now. What I personally think needs to happen is for PlayStation to commit themselves, bring more of their first party content to PlayStation Game Pass, whether that's day one, maybe six months down the road or a year later, at least that is something to keep people subscribed. I don't think that they necessarily need to drop their games day one into the service like Xbox 
works because they do operate differently than Microsoft. But I mean, if they do manage to release their games day one into the service, that would be massive. Though I would hope that they would at least release their newer games into the service six months or a year later down the road, which will show fans that they have something consistently to look forward to with PlayStation Game Pass. And then other than that, you have to be willing to fork over more money to these third parties to bring in their games quicker rather than later. Quantity is not enough. You have to get new releases on a regular basis. Again, whether that is day one or six months down the road, as long as these are newer, that will be in an enticing service. Based on their PlayStation Plus output over the last year, I am actually pretty confident in that aspect because they have been releasing several day one games into PlayStation Plus. Plus, so I think that they will do a good job with that. Having PlayStation 1, 2, 3, and PSP games though, that is a very good selling point in my opinion, preferably locally, though I, that's not something that I necessarily expect. Overall though, it does absolutely sound like PlayStation is preparing to have PlayStation Game Pass out next year. They say it will release sometime in spring of 2022, and it will be very interesting to see exactly what they have planned. If they truly commit to this, I think that they could be onto something massive here. But if they just kind of absorb PlayStation now into PlayStation Plus, I don't think that that alone necessarily will solve the problem. So we'll have to see what they have planned with PlayStation Game Pass. We'll kind of see about all that, but as we learn more, I will of course keep you all updated. Now, one other thing that we're going to be talking about today is the difficulty of buying an Xbox Series X, Nintendo Switch OLED, and of course, the PlayStation 5, all of which are selling out incredibly fast. And this is for a couple of different reasons. One being, yes, as I always like to say, these consoles are in incredibly high demand. This is easy to see online. But another problem is that we do have some scalpers out there that are trying to buy up as much stock as they can. That way they can go out in places like eBay and sell them for basically double the price. It really is ridiculous by this point, and it is a little shady. It just seems like, yes, people are kind of taking advantage of the situation because over the last year, we've kind of had to resort into buying these consoles only online. You can't just go to a store and pick them up. So one of the things that scalpers have been doing is they've been getting these automated bots, they put them on a website, and then as soon as the consoles come in stock, these bots will try to buy up as much of the stock as possible. It's basically an unfair advantage, and this has caused some controversy in the industry. In fact, I've seen much of the community bring up this situation and say this should absolutely be illegal. And for those people that has been asking for this, it does sound like the government is listening after all. Because now there's been a new bill that has been reintroduced aiming to stop scalpers and the bots they use from hoarding hot ticket items this holiday season and beyond. This is called the Stopping Grinch Bots Act, which is definitely uh, an interesting name. I actually quite like that one a lot, but let's check out what they're saying here. At a time when families should be able to spend time with their loved ones, digital Grinch bots are forcing Americans to scour online sites in the hopes of finding an affordable gift or paying exorbitant prices for a single toy. These bots don't just squeeze consumers, they pose a problem for small businesses, local retailers, and other entrepreneurs trying to ensure they have the best items in stock for their customers. And this right here would be a massive blow on the scalping community, and I really do believe by this point it might be necessary. We've been seeing this happen not just with consoles in the last year, but this has been happening in the collecting community really in general. We're seeing this happen with Pokemon cards. We've been seeing it happen with basketball shoes, and the list just kind of goes on. Anything that is limited, these scalpers are trying to get as much stock as they possibly can. And it's one thing if you get these in a fair way, but the fact that some of these scalpers use bots, it, it, it is shady. So, I mean, I understand why the government is trying to step in by this point. And now that we are in kind of this digital age where I mean, we can't just go to the store and pick up these items, this is just becoming more and more problematic. So yeah, I think it's a little sad that we've gotten to this point, but it might be necessary to make some rules around this type of stuff. Of course, though, we will have to wait and see what happens with all this. Just because this bill was reintroduced doesn't necessarily mean that it will be passed. So we'll have to wait and see what happens. 
Let's go and take a look at the poll of the day though, where I asked you all, would you buy an Xbox handheld console that focused on streaming cloud-based games? We did talk about this yesterday because it does sound like Microsoft is working on some kind of Xbox handheld console. And because they do have cloud-based gaming, it does make me wonder if that might be something that they're considering. Could they be offering a dedicated device to focus on these cloud-based games. So I thought it'd be interesting to see how many people would actually buy into this. And well, you all seem very, very split on this one. In fact, this might be the first poll that I've posted that actually came down to a tie, but 47% of you did vote for yes for the right price, while 47% of you also voted for no. And okay, it does seem like you all are split on this one, but I would have to say at the same time, with 47% voting that they would still be interested in a device like this, I think that does show that there would be enough of a crowd to make a device like this. No, it might not necessarily be the best selling platform in the world, but it seems like there's enough of a crowd to maybe make a product like this. I personally think it is interesting, and if you were to ask me a year ago, I would have definitely liked a device like this. Yes, you can absolutely play Xbox Cloud games, on your phone and there are some pretty interesting controllers out there i have the razor kishi as well as the jungle cat both play these cloud games extraordinarily well but it's still nice to have a dedicated device that's just really good as something specific so that's kind of the way i look at it but the thing is is things have kind of changed for me over the last year and the reason i say that is because now we have the steam deck coming out in 2022 and the thing about the steam deck is that it plays games locally and you can can actually play Xbox Game Pass games for PC on the Steam Deck. So right now, that's probably the direction that I would take, though I admit that a cloud-based device would still be interesting, and I do think that there would be enough of a crowd to make a product like that. Anyways, though, that's it for this episode, but if you liked the video, don't forget to bell notification and subscribe button for more content just like this. Also, if you'd like to support the channel through Patreon, thank you for making this content possible. Peace out.